Germany at the end of the 1930s. The Nazi party came to power and planned to establish a new order in Europe. Apart from eliminating the political opposition within Germany, their main goal was to establish a community of the German people based on racial and anthropological principles. Those who did not fit this Aryan purity were to be taken out of society. Dozens of work camps were built to house the prisoners, and Ravensbrück, 100 kilometers north of Berlin, was the Nazi regime's central concentration camp for women. From 1938 to 1945, over 100,000 women and children from more than 30 countries were deported to the camp. Offenders were organized and classified by a system of colored triangles to be worn on their person. The black triangle, reserved for work shirkers or those deemed antisocial elements. This group included gypsies and prostitutes. Purple for Jehovah's Witnesses. Ravensbrück housed male prisoners as well and the pink triangle was exclusively designated for male, homosexual prisoners. The red triangle was worn by the largest group, the political prisoners. Many of them had been active in the resistance or had refused to perform forced labor for the Germans. Jewish prisoners wore the yellow star, with a second triangle pointing downward to complete the Star of David. Surprisingly, Ravensbrück held relatively few Jewish prisoners, until 1944, when Auschwitz and other camps were evacuated, and Germany was in the process of liquidating the prisoners. I grew up in the Fairfax district of Los Angeles, which was lovingly called the Borscht Belt. And it was called the Borscht Belt because there were so many immigrants, many of them still from the Holocaust, who had immigrated here. And I went to school with children of Holocaust survivors. And many of my friend's parents had numbers on their arms. And as a little child, you don't really know what it is. You kind of know a little bit about it, but not that much. There were four SS-run companies at Ravensbrück in which prisoners were forced to work. The largest among them was the textile and leather recycling company, Texled, where prisoners made uniforms for the SS. Some women making socks deliberately made the heels too narrow or defective in other ways so that the soldiers would get blisters on their feet. In 1942, the Siemens and Hauske Company established a production facility at Ravensbrück later transferring its entire telephone production work to the camp. Amazingly, this company, which manufactured arms for the Nazi regime, is still in existence today. Despite the horrific conditions, friendships developed, and secret cultural or religious activities often helped prisoners to preserve their human dignity and will to survive. Numerous works of art were produced despite strict bans and adverse conditions in the camp. Prisoners made drawings and wrote songs, poems, or prayers. Children were forced to work from the age of 12, while the younger ones played games like Roll Call, Selection, and SS. At 10 of their concentration camps, the SS established prisoner brothels as an incentive for male prisoners. The women who were forced into prostitution at these brothels were recruited from Ravensbrück. Many women volunteered for brothel detail because they hoped it would increase their chances of survival. Under the supervision of Carl Gebhardt, the use of sulfonamides to treat gas gangrene was tested on a group of Ravensbrück prisoners, who later became known as the Rabbits. 
Gebhardt's researchers deliberately infected prisoners with gas gangrene by wounding them and contaminating the wounds with soil, splinters of wood, glass, or pus, and then testing them with various sulfonamide drugs. Similar experiments took place in the Dachau concentration camp. Between June and December of 1944, as the Allies were gaining a stronghold, more than 52,000 women from other camps were taken to Robinsbrück. In early 1945, the SS murdered between five and 6,000 prisoners, most of them women, in a provisional gas chamber that was built at the camp. In the spring of 1945, with the Russian army approaching, the SS began to evacuate the camp. They started by murdering prisoners who were sick or no longer able to walk. Around the same time, the Swedish and International Red Cross managed to gain permission from the SS to evacuate prisoners to neutral countries. The first Red Army unit arrived at the Robinsbrück camp on April 30, 1945. The Soviet troops found around 2,000 seriously sick prisoners whom the SS had left behind. Although they repaired the water and electricity lines that had been destroyed by the SS and provided food and medication, they also raped many of the women. It is estimated that 30,000 people, women, as well as men and children, had died at Ravensbrück. It's believed the people in the town of Furstenberg did know. How could you not know? It would be almost impossible to live this close to a concentration camp and not know what was happening. I mean, you could smell it. They didn't have the power to do anything about it. But today, we see things happening globally, and this time, we do have the power to do something about it. <laughs>